Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2017 Honda Fit, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Demco Supplemental Braking System. There's going to be five main components needed to flat tow your Honda Fit. You're going to have the base plate, which a base plate is going to provide us with a solid connection point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. That tow bar is going to be the second thing that we're going to need. So the tow bar is going to be the link in between the front of our Honda and the back of our motorhome. The third thing will be safety cables. And these are going to be used as a backup device in the event of a catastrophic disconnect. These are going to keep your Honda attached to the back of your motorhome. Fourth thing is going to be tow bar wiring. So the wiring is going to transfer all of the necessary lighting functions from the back of your motorhome to the back of your Honda. That way you're not only safe, but legal as well. And last but not least is the braking system. So the braking system is going to apply the brakes in your Honda whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome. So that way it's gonna bring you to a more safe and predictable stop and you're really going to help reduce any wear and tear on the motorhome because with the braking system, your motorhome isn't solely responsible to do all the stopping. It's gonna be a really great choice for a braking system for those of you that plan on flat towing often or just want that ease of use by not having to really set anything up every time you do want to flat tow. With this one, once you're all hooked up, all you're gonna to have to do is flip a switch and connect your tether from the front of your car to the back of your motorhome. Now, as far as some of the other styles of braking systems, such as portable ones, those are going to require you to set them up every time you want to flat tow and every time you want to unhook your Honda and drive it, you are going to have to remove that braking system. So inside of the car here is where our G-Force controller is going to be, where the switch is located. So right now it's in the off position. Whenever we're all hooked up and ready to activate our braking system, all you're gonna have to do is flip it to the on position. Once you arrive to your destination, get unhooked to deactivate the braking system, simply just push it to the off position. This system is a proportional style braking system. So more or less what that means is the harder you apply the brakes inside of the motorhome, the Honda Fit is going to match it. So that just provides us with a more predictable and smooth stop. So for example, say if you're driving down the road, you hit a red light and you kind of come to a rolling stop, barely applying the brake, the Honda's gonna do the same thing. Say if you're on the highway and you need to come to a really fast emergency stop and you really gotta stand on the motorhome's brake pedal, the Honda's going to do the same thing. It just provide you with that peace of mind knowing that the car is actually the motorhome and overall just makes it a lot easier to tow behind the motorhome. The system is also going to use an indicator light which you can stick to the back of your rear view mirror and whenever the system activates it's going to illuminate the LEDs red. That way you can kind of keep an eye on things whenever you're going down the road. So that's especially useful for those of you that have a rear facing observation camera you can really pay attention, hit the brakes, you'll be able to see those lights light up, allowing you to figure out if the system is activating or not. It's also gonna have a safety feature known as a breakaway switch. And what this is for, say in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, this breakaway pin will get pulled out. And when that happens, the braking system will activate helping bring your fit to a safe stop. So overall, really reliable and convenient braking system to use once you have it installed. Speaking of installation, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our install, we're first going to mount up all of our main components. And the first one we're gonna focus on is our operating unit. So the way I secured our operating unit, I just mounted it behind our bumper beam that way it's secure and out of the way. And how I did it is I just used a bracket here. That's just an angle bracket. Now this bracket does not come included, 
but you should be able to either make one or find one at the hardware store, something like that. And I just secured it to our bumper beam using some self-tapping screws and some bolts. Then we can mount up our breakaway switch. This one's pretty straightforward. It's just bolted onto a bracket here that's connected to our base plate. Again, this bracket is not included and I'm using one I just had laying around. But here at eTrailer, we do sell some no drill brackets that just get connected using a clamp like this. And if you're wanting to mount it up this way, I'd recommend picking up the short no drill bracket and that'll accomplish the same thing. Now we can move inside of our Honda and mount up our G-Force controller. So we're over here on the passenger side and I mounted it to our center console here. Now, whenever you do this, there's a couple things you need to make sure that you do because there is a specific orientation that this G-Force controller needs to go. This black knob here, you want this to face towards the front of our car and you're going to want it to be as level as possible. So not only horizontally, but vertically as well as side to side. So I ended up choosing this location because it's in the open and out of the way. And I just secured it to the plastic using the included self-tapping screws. Now if we move up to our rear view mirror, we can put on our indicator light. So this just has some sticky tape on it. So you'll clean the surface off real good and push it onto the back of your rear view. And then we can start to run the wire that's coming off of it. So I just ran it straight up. And then what I did was just work it in between the headliner and the windshield. There's a small crevice there that you can push it into and it'll keep it nice and tight. Then once you get to the corner here, you can kind of pull back this plastic. And just kind of feed it along. And so here it is right here. And what I also did too is the rubber weather stripping that usually runs through here. You can just peel that off out of the way. Makes it a little easier to see. With that being said, I just ran it along. Down through here. And there's a plastic panel that goes right here. Again, you can just grab, grab it with your hands and pop it off. And the wires ended up dropping down right there. So now we can move down to our brake pedal arm and mount up our actuator cylinder. So the actuator cylinder just clamps onto the brake pedal arm. Since our car is a stick shift, I found it uh, to give us a little more room if you mount the physical cylinder over here on the right side of the brake pedal arm. And that just clamps on using these four nuts. Now there's gonna be a cable coming off that actuator cylinder that runs down to an anchor point. What I did was take the included black bracket here and use the self-tapping screws to secure that part to the firewall. You wanna make sure whenever you drill that there's nothing behind there that you can accidentally damage. And then I took a nut and a bolt, ran it through that bracket and clamped on our anchor point. Now whenever you do this, you want to make sure that the cable is going to be as level and straight as possible. And once you have it where you want it, you can take the slack out of the cable and tighten it down using a 4 millimeter Allen key. There will be a set screw on top of the anchor point that you tighten down a little bit and that will keep that cable from moving. Now you still want a little bit of play. That way it isn't pulling so tight. You're not gonna have to worry about damaging it. But with that being said, that's all there really is to the actuator cylinder. And while we're down here, we can run some of our wiring and our airline tubing through this grommet and the firewall. That way we can push it out into the engine compartment. So what you're gonna do is just very carefully poke a little hole in that factory grommet. And that'll give us enough room to push our G-Force controller wiring through, our nylon air tubing through, and what I did as well was take two extra lengths of wire that's not included, so I do recommend picking some up. I would say about 15 feet in total, and 
push those two extra wires through as well. So here's where it came through the grommet in our firewall. All the wiring I kept over here on the driver's side. And now I'm gonna run it down to our main operating unit. So I just kind of went along through here. And underneath our battery almost. And here's where it comes out, right underneath the headlight. I just ran it along down through here and about a foot or two away from our main operating unit is where it ended and now we can get all of these wires connected. The first wires that we're going to focus on will be the green, yellow, and white wires from our G-Force controller. So these are just going to get tapped into our diode wiring color for color. So the green G-Force controller wire is going to get connected to the green diode wire. So you're going to twist those two ends together on one side and complete your circuit by taking the other side of the green diode wire and crimping it using a buck connector. Same thing for the yellow one and more or less the same thing for the white wire. However, we're going to add an additional length of white wire on the other side of this buck connector and this is just going to get grounded. So what I did was use a few foot piece and this little piece actually does come included in the kit. But I just ran it up along through here. And I crimped on a ring terminal and secured it to our bumper beam. And that'll give us the ground that we need. So now we can hook up the red and black wires coming from our G-Force controller. And these are going to get connected to the wiring that's just coming out of the operating unit. I just ran it right over to here. So the red wire from our operating unit will get connected to the red wire from our G-Force controller. The black wire from our operating unit is going to get connected to the black wire from our G-Force controller. And what I've done, one of those extra wires that we ran in, I just tapped it into that. And that extra wire is going to get hooked up to our indicator light here in a little bit. Now we can move on to the wires coming off of our breakaway switch. So there's gonna be two wires coming off the breakaway switch. We're gonna have a blue one and a orange one that has a black stripe. The blue wire from the breakaway switch, we're going to connect that to the blue wire from our operating unit. So those both go into one end of the buck connector. On the other end of that buck connector, one of those extra wires that we ran, I connected it there. This other extra wire is gonna get connected to the indicator light in a little bit as well. The orange and black wire from our breakaway switch, that's going to get connected to the brown wire from our operating unit. And then on this end, we need to run this up towards the positive battery terminal because this is gonna get connected to power. And so I had quite a bit of extra wiring, this orange and black wire left over from trimming this off. And so I just use this to run it up to the battery. And so the way I did that is I just followed our bundle again. I just followed our bundle back up, up and under our headlight. And it comes out right here. So we're not just going to directly hook this up to the battery. We're actually going to crimp on a fuse holder. So to do that, we'll strip back some of that insulation. I'm going to twist that wire to give us a good connection. We can grab our fuse holder. Make sure the fuse is not installed. We're going to be putting that in at the very end. So we'll cut that in half. Strip back both ends as well. Give those a twist. So one end of the fuse holder is going to receive a buck connector. Slide that over. 
crimp it down. The other end is going to receive a ring terminal. This works the same way. And what we can do is take the empty end of our butt connector and connect it to our orange and black wire. So now that I have it connected, I'll go ahead and grab a heat source and seal up the butt connector ends. Now we can connect our ring terminal to our positive battery post. So we flip open this cover. We're going to have a 10 millimeter nut here. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And this one should come completely off. Slide our ring terminal over. And we'll just re-secure that nut. So now back inside, those two extra wires that I said you could hook up to the indicator light, that's what you can do now. So this black one here that we tapped into our black wires from our GeForce controller and our operating unit, that will get connected to the black wire from our indicator light. And just to separate or be able to distinguish each wire since I did use both black wires. On this one, I did put a piece of tape on it. And so this black one with the piece of tape that we tapped into the blue wires from our GeForce controller in our operating unit, this is that one. And so this wire will get, get connected to the red wire here that goes to our indicator light. With all of our electrical hooked up, we can now work on our nylon air tubing. So here's where it comes through the firewall. And then I just follow this factory vacuum hose, just kind of zip tying our air tubing along the way. Be sure to avoid anything hot or moving. And I just dropped it down along through here, underneath of our headlight. So here's where it comes down. Ran it under our bumper and to our operating unit. So now this will just plug into our operating unit, but you need to make sure you have a nice clean cut on this. So I'm going to use a tool like this. You could use a utility knife or even a tubing cutter. You don't want to use a regular pair of snips because it'll pinch it and potentially leak. So we'll trim that. Make sure it's nice and straight and clean. And what you're going to do is this fitting right here. I'm just going to take the air tubing, plug it in, push all the way down, then kind of just lightly pull back to make sure it's completely seated. Now that we have this plugged into our operating unit, we can go back inside the car and plug the other end of our airline tubing into the actuator cylinder the same way that we did it out here. So here inside the car, this is what the airline tubing is gonna look like once you plug it into the actuator cylinder. Now what we can do is work on our vacuum lines. So we do need to hook up a T fitting and a check valve. And we're gonna do it right here in this section. So this is the main vacuum line that runs from our intake to our vacuum brake booster. So what I'm gonna do is just cut a small section out. And then we can add in our T and our check valve. So what this is, we have our T fitting, and maybe an inch or two of hose. You're going to push that hose over the barbs on the T-fitting. It is pretty tight, so you want to get it all the way on there, but be careful not to work it so hard that you crack the plastic fittings. 
And then we're gonna take our check valve and place it into the other end. I wanna point out the check valve will be black on one side and kind of a clear whitish color on this side. When we hook this up, we want the black side of the check valve to face towards the engine. Push that in. Then we're simply just going to tap it in. So again, the black side of the check valve going towards the engine. The other side of that factory vacuum line. We'll push onto that barbed fitting on our T. And then we're going to take our length of included vacuum hose and connect that end to our T. So work the same way. And just push over it. Now we can run this hose down to our main operating unit where we'll hook the other end of it up to. So I routed our vacuum hose to our main operating unit. More or less the same path that we took to get our nylon air tubing there. This down underneath our headlight. It comes out here. Right up through there. And so the other end of it, we can plug into the check valve that comes already attached to our main operating unit. Same concept, it's a barb fitting. And we'll just push that hook right over the top of it. With everything hooked up now, we can come back to our fuse holder and install the included fuse. Just push that down, replace the cap. And now we can kind of go to our wiring and zip tie it and tidy it up to give us a clean install look. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco Supplemental Braking System on our 2017 Honda Fit.